I'm Christian and I'm a software engineer at Fullstack Energy. And in this video tutorials, I will be talking about OCPP protocol and I will be talking about implementation OCPP protocol for developers. So I will help you to understand how to implement OCPP as a developer. So first thing first, what is OCPP? OCPP stands for Open Charge Point Protocol. It's a standard that allows EV chargers and charging management system to communicate. Regardless of manufacturer, it ensures interoperability, meaning different brands of chargers can work with different backend systems, making EV charging networks more flexible and scalable. What we see in this diagram is simplified vision of OCP. At the bottom, bottom of the screen, we have charge points. Basically, that's our chargers and we have some cars connected to it. And they will communi communicate with central system using OCPP protocol. The central system, sometimes referred as CPMS, which stands for Charge Point Management System, which is basically a software that manages and monitor charging stations, or CSMS, which is kind of official term that used in OCPP 201 version of the language. It stands for Charging Station Management System. No matter how, how you're going to call it, you can call it CPMS or CSMS or Central System. Basically, that's a place where you will have your WebSocket server implemented here and that will receive information. So every charger will connect to your server and it will exchange in bi-directional way OCPP message. That way each charger will need to have its own end central system that will connect to it and they both agree what kind of messages that will be sent from and to in between them. So OCPP is managed by OpenCharge Alliance. So if you go to opencharge-alliance.org, you can find more about the protocols. You can uh, click on the protocols here, click on learn more about OCPP, and here somewhere you will have a download button, so you can click on any of those and or down, download there. And she will have an option to create an account and she download as a login user or you can have it without account. And I will proceed without an account. So basically what we have here is we have a few versions of the protocol. We have version the newest one. At the time of recording in early 2025, this is very new version. So it's not really widely implemented yet. So this is new version that maybe in the future will be a standard. At the moment, it is not. And we have another version that is getting more popular at the moment. It's kind of few years old already, but it's OVP201. That's a, a kind of addition to the standard we used to have, but it's still not widely implemented. I would say uh, there is a lot less than 5% of the charges that implement 201 at this time of a recording, but hopefully that will change in the future. So the most common standard version is OCPP 1.6. And I would say that's easily 90% of the chargers have that, have that implemented. And that's the mostly common version right now. What you can do is you can click on this one and down, download a file for that specific version. Feel free to uh, read about um, all of them, but it, that's a quite a long document. So let's see what's actually in the files there. So when you unpack this uh, document, you will have a few files here and there, there will be a different kind of version. J stands for JSON and S stands for SOAP, which is kind of different implementation of the protocol. And we'll be talking about that in the future. At the moment, what we are interested in is, is the first file here, which is OCPP 1.6 edition 2 PDF. So if you open this, that's quite a long document. So it is 116 pages long and you can read more about the protocol in there. What's important in the protocol is whenever we go to any of that kind of diagram, it will show you the communication between the charge point and central system. As I showed you in the previous diagram, the central system is our where we will have our server and charge point it's our charger so you see from that diagram that there is a communication going left and right so we have right arrow which is going from charge point to central system and you have left arrow which is central system to charge point and this protocol ocpp specify what kind of messages are sent to 
from charge point to central system and what uh, messages from central system to charge point. So basically we have that communication written here and there is a strict rules what we can and what we can't send really uh, from one place to another. Okay, let's back to our chart. So what we have here in the central system is WebSocket server. That means communication in between the charger and central system, whatever you will call it, is through WebSocket. WebSocket is basically a communication protocol that allows real-time two-way interactions between the client, like a web app or in our case EV charger, and a server over a single always open connection. So in our case, and that's most common solution, is to open WebSocket server on our central system. So WebSocket is not the only implementation uh, that is possible for OCPP. There are different uh, kind of approaches possible, like a SOAP and HTTP, and that uh, has been uh, very popular in version 1.5, OCPP version 1.5, uh, but it has been deprecated. There is also possibility to introduce something like MQTT, uh, which is lightweight and uh, kind of better for unstable networks, but it's only available for 201 uh, version of the protocol and it does require uh, to having a broker. You can do, uh, implement it with REST API, you can do, uh, do it with AMQP and so on. But mostly common version or way to implement the OCPP is for a WebSocket. It is supported in 1.6, which is most popular. It is supported in 2.0.1, which is a kind of uh, upcoming version that might be in the future in a few years, uh, also very, very popular. So it's kind of very universal and it will serve purpose. So basically what you do is you open a WebSocket server on the central system and from your charger, you connect to it. So let's take a look how this can be done. I have a file here. This is a TypeScript or, or JavaScript file, but it will help you illustrate how we can actually implement a WebSocket and how can we connect it. So this is JavaScript. You can write it similar code in any of the languages. I will do export as this is a module and I will make a variable so constant and let's say call it WebSocket like this. So basically I have a WebSocket. My ID is actually helping me out to write the rest of it, but I can do new WebSocket. And if you know a little bit about the JavaScript, you know that if you don't import anything in the front of the file, that means this is already built in the language. So you don't need to import WebSocket library. WebSocket is already built in JavaScript. So the first thing what we need to provide is an URL. So let's say I will have my central system on that URL and then we'll be talking about this in a second. And the second part here, whenever we make a connection to the WebSocket is we can provide an array. So it's a list of protocols and WebSocket is protocol itself, but it's communication protocol. The protocol here is a kind of agreement that in between the two parties, what kind of messages they will ex exchange. And in here, what I can do is in, I can have it as a string and I can provide, uh, maybe I can put it in another line here. So I can provide OCPP 1.6. This is basically the version I'm telling, like I'm creating WebSocket connection from my client, which is a kind of simulator, but normally that will be implemented on a charger. I'm trying to connect to my central system and I will be using that kind of communication. So whatever I open connection, this will be sent along with it and it will tell the central system what kind of protocol I'm using. You can specify more than one uh, protocol, uh, but uh, at the, for simplicity, we will provide 1.6 and connect like, like this. <clears throat> so that will be simplified version, how you can connect to it. So what is the URL actually? So it's a few bits here. So normally in the URL, you have something like HTTP or HTTPS. For WebSockets, you have WS, which is WebSocket, but you also can have WebSocket secure. And basically that's a kind of standard. So if you have your WebSocket on your central system, you will need to install certificates to run it on WebSocket secure. And normally you will connect it like this, WebSocket secure, and it's not gonna be localhost. It will be on some kind of a domain but this is basically a domain name and this is the port that is running. So it is kind of few bits. So you have like a protocol, 
and then domain and the port that you have that running and then you can have slash and something usually what you provide in the url it's kind of more information about a specific charge station that you are connecting from so you can have like a here you can specify what kind of protocol as well depends on like implementation on the server you can specify the token id you can specify that it will be that kind of a charger because every single connection from a client will need to be a unique so you need to tell this 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 part here it's a domain name uh, so kind of a connection to the central system but uh, what's happening after the slash is what you are trying to send and that will be unique for every single charging station and usually that's uh, appended by having a charger name in here so let's take a look at a demo now I have my simulators. This is something that I created for myself for, for a test. So I have a charge station simulator. And what I have is I have my central system on chargecomplete.com, that's our system. And uh, I can see here, I have a, a kind of a testing account here and I can see like which chargers are connected and I can test it with my simulator. So basically what I have here is I have one charger that is currently disconnected. So there is no connection in between the charger and central system. So I have this uh, name here. And if I will go to the simulator that I have here, I have that name there. So basically, what I have is, as I told you before, this is the URL. So WebSocket Secure, that's our domain name, and then this is port. I'm running my WebSocket server, uh, the secure version on AD10. And then in uh, after the slash, I have a few other bits, like what is the protocol, and then I have uh, ID, and then I have a token ID. And at the end of the URL also will put this. So that will tell which charging station is trying to connect to. So this is a simple implementation here. I can right click and I can inspect. And if I will go to console here, so clear it out, I can actually try to connect to this. So if I will connect it, you can see here WebSocket connection opened. So at this point, I open connection with a WebSocket. I can go here and after a few seconds, I can refresh it. You can see it is connected. So basically my central system recognize that I made a connection for the CP01. So if I have that CP01 in my connection URL, that means my central system will know this is connected and it's operational. So basically what I have here is a way to tell if I getting any messages. Normally that the charge station will send some messages once in a while, like heartbeat into central system. So central system will know what chargers are connected and online. So this is the basic setup for the WebSocket connection in between the charger and a central system.